Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our first ever Adrian and Matt podcast. Yep. 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 So, uh, yeah, what's up? I don't... No, I'm already... Hello, YouTubers. YouTubers. Hello. You just say YouTube, not YouTubers. I call them YouTubers. YouTubers? Yeah. Right, you got a problem with that? No. Huh? Um, yeah? You want to go? No. I'll go right now. No. We're busy. Oh, uh, yeah, we're all busy. Um, Alright, so we're, this is just going to be a podcast about us talking about sports and our opinions and stuff like that. Well, it's not going to be us talking about sports, it's going to be us talking about sports, that's what the podcast is, not the podcast about us talking about sports, because we are going to be talking about sports. Shut up. Just to clarify, yeah, yeah. just to clarify. Right. Okay, where, do you, where do you want to start? Where do we want to start? Uh, it's well, it's a, first of all, schedule today on the show. Alright, uh, well, we just have um, some Leafs news, some Sen news, because... Uh, Sen? 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 What's Sen? Sen? Good job, that's an outtake. Good job. Somebody in this room, <coughs> not me, is a Sens fan. Woo! Living in Toronto, like, that's blasphemy. Woo! You suck. Um, Woo! We've got some Sens news, some Leafs news, uh, hockey, fighting in hockey. CFL, we got uh, some MLB, which is a, which is a change because the MLB hasn't been going on for a little while. Uh, World Series finished up, what, last month? Two months ago? Something like that? Octo- yeah, early October. Something like that. Oh, up for the oh yeah, winter meeting's coming up. Right, AA, A-A, Alex Anthopoulos. AA. AA. Uh, alcohol, no. No. Alright, where do you want to start? Are you calling him an alcoholic? No. AA. Come on. Oh. Just where do you want to start? Where do I want to start? I want to start. Let's talk with Leafs. Let's talk about the Leafs first. We are in Toronto, as you stated, so. Alright, uh, so, okay, right now it's, uh, right about 4 o'clock on Saturday, so, uh, before the Leafs and Sabres game, but after the uh, Leafs and Anaheim trade. Uh, what do you think about that trade? I don't know. It's. I, I was kind of honestly, I was a little bit of a Blacker fan. Uh, obviously. First, first, first off, if you haven't actually heard about the trade, uh, here it is. The Anaheim Ducks have acquired the defenseman Jesse Blacker and a pair of picks in the 2014 NHL draft from the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for forwards Peter Holland and Brad Stobitz. I think. Stop it, it's okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so... A whole lot of nothing! <laughs> Except those picks, those picks are good. Yeah, a, a conditional, the third round pick could become a second round pick. It is conditional? I don't know. The I conditions. didn't hear about the condition. Okay. They didn't, they didn't say it. Okay, anyway... Um, oh, it is a conditional. Okay, third round becoming a second round. Yeah. Should Holland play 25 games with the Leafs? Only if he plays 25 games. Okay. And only Holland. Probably not. No one cares about Stabitz. Um, yeah, he's in the AHL already. Who is he? He's a, he's a fighter. You haven't, you haven't heard of him? No! Oh, he was on Minnesota. The only guy the only guy I've heard of in this trade is Jesse Blacker. Yeah. Career minor leaguer. Don Cherry. He's, he's 22. That's not a career. That's a career. That's not even close to career. <laughs> if he hasn't made it by now, he's done. Okay, whatever. Talk to Mike Zygomanis. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, as I was saying, I was a little bit of a Jesse Blacker fan. Obviously, he was in the NHL. He Probably wasn't going to make it to the Leafs anytime soon. Maybe. Maybe. But, uh, this is just a trade out of desperation. <laughs> they, they need centers. They oh, need definitely, them. definitely. Uh, Bolin down, uh, what's his name? Kadri suspended. Tyler Bozak already out. Uh, lower body, that's all the Leafs are really saying. You know the Leafs. <laughs> lower body, upper body. We don't disclose anything. Um, I like Brad Stoffers, honestly. He's a... Uh, He's a scrapper. He's, he's a good offense. He's a good. He's a good physical presence. I mean, I'm, I'm actually looking at some of his highlights right now. He's he's got some. Uh, he's got some. Um, he's got some skill in the uh, in the ring. You know, I, mean, I don't. I don't. I don't think he's Chris Neal good, but uh, <laughs> had to say it. Had to say it. No, he's not going to get his his name on a leaf in Rico Coliseum. Have you seen that ring? It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Who played for the Marlies? Yeah. I don't know. A lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people. Um, so yeah. Mike Zygomanis. <laughs> New Rochester American. Is he actually yeah, he actually got traded. Or released. Or picked out. I don't even know. Don't know. Waivers. Something like that. Oh, yeah. So it happened in a game against Minnesota on Tuesday, I think. Tuesday, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> oh, I saw. That was, that was so blatant against them. Ample time to stop. Okay, okay, so, okay, first of all, if you haven't seen it, he uh, got called for two minutes of interference on Nick Backstrom, but he basically elbowed him in the face. Uh, Backstrom hit his head on the ice. Viciously. It, it was vicious. Uh, 
And then later in the game, he uh, got called for a five-minute major in game misconduct. Or whatever you call it. It's actually a match. I am the house referee, so because no one really cares, but um, okay, so security so reasons. So uh, in the end, he gets suspended mostly for his hit on Backstrom. And uh, so I used to be a goalie. Uh, I guess I still am. I haven't played in a while because my own problems don't need to get into that. But uh, as a goalie, I was thinking, yeah, good. Kadri should be suspended. And, you know, that was blatant elbow, headshot, you know, whatever. That was dirty. But as a Leafs fan, I'm thinking, no, we need centers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Spoken like a true Leaf fan. Hence, hence the need for uh, Peter Holland. <laughs> Obviously, people in Anaheim have heard of him. Yeah. Maybe. We're not sure. They could have been AHLers anyway. I believe they were. My take on it, it's warranted. Obviously, it is very warranted. He had ample time to stop. I've seen the play a lot of times. I've seen the clip of it over and over again. I'm actually watching it right now. It is it is uh, very, very, very blatant. He had, like I said, ample time to stop. And, yeah, just bowled right through him. No, no intention of, like, stopping, no intention of, like, maybe hitting somewhere else, just directed right at the head. I mean, there was no need for it, there's no need for that any anywhere in the NHL, no need anywhere that for, anywhere in hockey for that. There we go, I couldn't speak for a second. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's a good fit. Three games, yeah, yeah, three games is, um, is a standard, I guess, for, uh, the NHL, but now it's, it's on Shanahan to... Sure. Sheriff Shanny to um t to keep to keep that standard. If it's, it's not, it's got to be like that. It's got to be a standard type of um, suspension. It's got to be so that if another guy anywhere else in the league does this, three games automatic. And uh, I was actually thinking about it like by myself. Well, not by myself. I saw on um, on uh, TSN they were saying like uh, the segment like you be the sheriff. I don't know if you see that. Um, they're saying uh, you should get four games for that. I was thinking to myself, uh, four games sounds right. I think he should get three for what he did to Backstrom, and then one for what he did to Granlin. Honestly, I don't think... I think the Granlin one... Uh, yeah, like you're... Sorry. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, it should only be... Um, it should only be one for the uh, Granlin hit. And yeah, I'm, I'm still going to stick with the three for, um, for the uh, hit on Backstrom. So four in total should have been what it was, or maybe even five if you really want to tack it on, uh, make it so that's not just a one game suspension. I mean, who hands out one one game suspensions a lot? If they don't happen, so when, uh, when they were uh, like saying why why the the explanation for the suspension, they focused on the Backstrom hit, not the Grand hit. So it's basically three three games for that, and yeah, uh, so I'm I'm satisfied with that. I'm fairly satisfied with it as well. I mean, um, like I said, it's warranted. And um, you can't not call something. You can't not yeah. make a suspension in that play. It's just it's the thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And I applaud Shanahan for that. One of the few things that I actually applaud him for. Yeah, I mean not not in his playing career. His playing career, yeah, I applaud him. He's a great player. In his job, no. It's a, it's been a checkered past. I don't think he's even making the calls. He's just the guy. The guy signing the papers. <laughs> Yeah. He's the, he's the mask behind the brain. Alright, let's move on. What do you want to talk about now? Uh, let's go to the other Canadian team. The Ottawa Senators capital team. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Night, yeah, they won last night. Big win. 4-2. Um, We're down 2-1 at one point, And they storm back. The pesky Sens storm back. Of course, their model this year is fearless. Not bad. It is. Right here. Right here. Okay. Right here. It is on the site. Take a look. So, the Bruins and the Stens. The Bruins, big bad Bruins, where are they in the standings? You got them? Where are they in the standings? Stats, one second, people. Yeah, we are very big noobs. Um, just a second, people. Yeah. Boston, second in the division with 25 points. Ottawa, sixth in the division with 20 points. I think that was a great win from the Sens. Uh, some great shots overall. Um, Chris Neal getting a goal last night. Uh, uh, Anderson started in net for the uh, Sens, and Rask started in net for the Bruins. Uh, Anderson, of late, has been a little... Uh, 
What'd you say? Yeah, yeah, a little shitty. Um, I said shaky, but okay. I said <laughs> shitty. Oh well. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, great save! Great save. Yeah, with the with the paddle paddle save against Philly. Yeah, that was against Philly, I believe. Um, Re Robin Leonard. Release the Leonard. Release the Leonard. Um, hashtag release the Leonard. Um, I think I think he's got. It. He's got great potential and probably be very good, but not a good But yeah, um, once again, though, the, uh, as of late, the Sens goaltending has been called into question. What do you think about that? Uh, I, I hate Anderson. And you hate Anderson? I hate Anderson, and it's not, it's only because he seems to have the game of his life every time he plays and leaves. <laughs> uh, they have, not even, I, I hated him before he was a senator, when, when he was on Colorado. When he was with the Avalanche? <laughs> Save shutout in Toronto or something like that. <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. So you're you're admitting to holding a grudge yes, against a player that you have no you you don't know him at all. No. 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 I'd like to point out I've actually met Craig Anderson. You've met, you stalk the I do not stalk the Sens. You go, you go to their hotel. That is that's <laughs> not what I do. I did that once. <laughs> I did it once, and I met Daniel Alfredson. That traitor. <laughs> but yeah, um, Sen's goaltending. We all know Sen's goaltending. What has happened in the past? Um, the Sen's goaltending obviously has been a problem in the past, but like, as of late, <laughs> oh really? The goalie graveyard. Yeah. You bring that one back. They're, they're, uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is probably more of a goalie graveyard. Yeah. Well, how many players have retired as a Leaf? Have long careers and retired as a Leaf? At least it just finished off so many players. But anyway, well, okay, that, that's a different case because they get them when they're like 35 and on the like down swing of their doesn't game. doesn't matter. Look at Dominic Hasek <laughs> when he came to the Sens, went to went to the, went to the Olympics, hurt, never was the same. Well, never again was he ever the same. And how long did he last after that? I don't know. I, I don't know. A couple a couple seasons. I'm pretty sure he played in Europe somewhere. Yeah, he's probably still playing in Europe somewhere. I need I mean, money. <laughs> Oh, Bobrovsky! <laughs> Shout out to Jay Onright. Rest in peace. <laughs> Get off the ice, kid! <laughs> One of the best moments in TSN history. This is Sports Center. Jerome McGinley? Jerome did you did you hear what he said? I did not hear what I said. You told me about ten minutes ago. <laughs> so what he said is that uh, okay, here's a quote. Uh, ideally, it would not be a part of. I don't know how to speak. It would not be a part <laughs> of. Today, but the nature of our sport is such that fighting actually curtails many dirty plays that could result in injuries. So basically, what he's saying is it's a way of self policing, and I've been saying this for a long time now, and I actually made this argument in my history class. Really? With Chinner? <laughs> Chinner! Um, yeah, so I made that argument. And, uh, Shout out to you, Mr. Chinyu. Mr. Chinyu. Brad! Brad. So, what, what Never let me on the baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Golf team. Golf team. 2012. 2012 golf team. What do I think about what he said? I, I think it's great what he said. A great old time player. Jerome McGinley obviously been around for a very long time. Finally, coming out and actually say we need players to like that have been around that that take a lot of influence, just like Jerome McGinley, like other players. Joe Thornton, if he came out, would be great. Uh, even Dion, what? <laughs> uh, Dion Phaneuf, Jason Spezza, a lot of players that have a lot of influence in the league that have been around for a long time. I think it's great that they're starting to come out and and actually speak out against this. So, like, say everyone right now is saying, "Oh my God." We need to cut fighting. It's bad. It's bad. This happens every year, people. Every single year. And it was the, the whole issue about fighting was really brought up when uh, George Paris. George Paris, exactly. On the ice and a freak and accident. It accident. And it is, it's just that, a freak accident. It could have happened, uh, you know, some, something, a freak accident that could have called into question um, a certain uh, way, like, way of a sport that... People would question why is that happening for a freak accident. Do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. I mean, it, it was it was just him falling after a fight. I mean, the fight was pretty much over. He tripped over Colton Orr, smashed his face, <laughs> smashed his face, 
It was it was bad. It was bad. It was scary moment. Exactly. It, the guy was taken off on a stretcher. I mean, that's scary. <laughs> it, you, like, I, I don't know. You probably didn't watch games. Was, no, I watched the game. I watched. I watched it. I watched these games. Yeah. I mean, and for that to happen, was it in Montreal? Yeah, it was in Montreal. For that building to go dead quiet, that is one of the loudest. I mean, obviously the Jets are probably the loudest building. Obviously. Um. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That is all that can be explained. I mean, all all the words that can explain that. It's like just excitement, just exploding every single time they touch the puck. Exactly. I mean, you can't stop that from actually happening. I mean, yeah, with the new rules in the NHL, you take your helmet off. That's it. You're not going to have the fight. I I'm for and against that rule. Obviously, it's going to protect the players, but it's also going to hurt the players. I mean, broken hands is a big issue. Yeah. And, um, like what? What I was thinking, like someone needs to invent like breakaway visors. Like, yeah. Just rip them off the helmet, right? Like, yeah. Like why is that not? A, why has that not been invented? Go all uh, go all mighty duck style, full full visor cage, just flip it up, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you sure you might look like a a weird uh, a weird unicorn, but um yeah yeah an idiot too. <laughs> I was going with weird unicorn, but um but yeah, fighting in hockey, I think it invo- I think it's still. It's still prominent. I think it should not go away. It's part of the game. You can't take it out. It's the culture of the game. All right. So uh, mo- moving on. Uh, NHL news. Keeping with hockey. Uh, what happened? What has happened in the NHL? Um, Alexi Amulin is going to return against the Rangers. Uh, is that his first name, Alexi? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> Uh, Zach Bogosian is out for Sunday's game with a lower body injury. That's not good for the Jets. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I want. You know what? I want to talk about something. Um, did you hear about uh, Jonathan Martin and the Miami Dolphins? Yes. Yes. The biggest thing. The biggest thing in the NFL right now. John Martin. Uh, something incognito. What's his first name? Richie. Richie Ignon. Ignon. He's the best Ig. In sports. Ig. I can't. Incognito. There we go. <laughs> I can't talk. He can't talk. We can't talk. My take on it, it's sports. I play hockey. I, I've played other sports. Um, not really. Yeah, yeah. Just shout out. I'm on the York Lions rowing team. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm on a rowing team. Uh, I was on my curling team in my high school. Um, and as well as the golf team on my high school. But I was on the hockey team in my high school. I played hockey my entire life. And as you get older, things your language evolves. I mean, when you're a little kid in in a hockey in a hockey thing, uh, hockey locker room, you're talking about what TV shows like SpongeBob, um, other stuff like kids TV shows. You know, uh, when you get older, you start talking about well, girls. You start talking about you. You just cost. It's like having a best friend. You know, <laughs> it's like having a, like a best friend, like a guy. If you're a guy and you have a best friend and you're in, you're at the high school age or like the the college age or the university age, same thing. Um, you're constantly making fun of each other. That's just how it is. Like, but did you hear the, the message you left for him? I didn't hear the message I left for him. It, well, I, I, don't I did hear though that he didn't blame him. It wasn't. It was just the culture or the attitude in the locker room. That's what I heard. Uh, so the message, like, so I don't know if you've seen Richie Incognito. He's a white guy. Yeah. Jonathan Martin, Martin is a black guy. Yeah. And, uh, so, Richie Incarnito, can't speak, (laughs) he's dropping N-bombs, he's, like, saying, like, I'm gonna kill your mom, he's saying, (laughs) it's it's really aggressive. That is actually really aggressive. I didn't hear exactly the language that was used. I knew that the N-word was dropped, but I didn't know about the kill your mother thing. That's, that's intense. Uh, Maybe a little bit. A little overboard, yeah, a little overboard. Okay, for my take is, um, bullying and, bullying in professional sports it's a weird term to me because yeah. when you think of bullying, you think of like uh, kids getting beaten up in the and, yeah in the uh, in the in the playground or in the hallways. It, 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 yeah, cyberbullying is obviously very big right now. Um, but you know, I I get because Miami Dolphins said uh, they're trying to toughen Jonathan Martin up, and uh, I can understand that, and I can understand they got a veteran guy to do that, and uh, yeah. you know, a big voice on the team. But uh, he he really just took it too far. Yeah, that that was um by him saying that by him using those comments. Uh, I also heard that um the Miami Dolphins considered exo- 
incognito, I can't speak. It's just not happening today. Incognito. Really, Caberlet? Shut up. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, folks. Uh, he's, gotten, he's got a Caberlet like, poster. Those are like 12 years old. Doesn't matter. Caberlet. <laughs> really, Caberlet? Where is he playing now? Switzerland? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, Inco I heard that Incognito was made a honorary black by the Miami Dolphins. I don't think there's such a thing. Well, I know guys, like personally, some of my friends that use that word liberally, white guys that use that word liberally, uh, in, in the presence of other black people, they're fine with it. So obviously there is some some form. Here's the thing. Um, you go, yeah. Uh, you know, oh, what's that sports show? Um, the one... NFL Live. Because no, no, no. <laughs> I talked about it on that. One where they do like um, Sports Nation. That's sports it. Nation, okay, yeah. Um, so they were talking about it. Of course, I, I love Sports Nation. It's a great and, show. Um, so ESPN. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I can't remember his name now, but uh, he was saying there, there's a difference between using a hard R and an A. Exactly. And honestly, like personally, I don't think either one is good for no. a white person to say. I don't no. Really. We're obviously not condoning the use of no. of these words. Um, but there, I think there is. I, they so they bleeped out the message, so I don't know which one he was using. But if he was using an A, then you know it's a little bit better. It's still not good. It's still not acceptable to be used as, especially as a public figure. It's still not acceptable to be used. But you can, you can kind of figure out the intent of what he was trying to like. Yeah. If he if he was using the A instead of the hard R, you could tell he was like trying to be. Trying to be a buddy to him, yeah. Kinda, sort of like, like build, build him up by like toughening him up. Yeah. But it's it's I don't know. It's just it, it's a, it's a real mess. I mean, we're not sure. No one's ever really gonna know what went down yeah. in the locker room because that's a behind closed doors. Because obviously the NFL is doing their investigation. It, it it can only go so far. I mean, what happens in a locker room generally stays in the locker room. It's Probably not going to come out. I mean, and, uh, yeah. I saw. Um, I think it was on ESPN. Um, they were doing an interview with Incognito, and like he seemed genuinely uh, sorry for the incident. He didn't mean for it to go that far. He seemed that way. Um, but I don't know. He could have been acting there, but he he gen gen genuinely seemed like uh, he didn't mean to uh, hurt Jonathan Martin. He certainly didn't mean for him to leave the team. No. Uh, so, you know... Because you never want your buddy to leave the team. Obviously, when you're on a team like that, like, especially an NFL team, I mean, it's a big team, so obviously, say, defensive guys are going to stick together, offense, special teams, they're all going to stick together, but they're going to have... That's a close-knit relationship between your buddies. I mean... Incognito said that they were buddies. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, were they, like, like best best friends? Maybe not. We're, we're not sure. We, you know, we don't know their relationship. We probably won't know the extent of their relationship. No. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just a horrible incident that it, again it's part of the culture. It's I think I think it's similar to the George Paris incident where it's kind of like um, something went too far. That probably happens all the time, and now we're talking about it. Yes, I mean that's uh, that's got to be what it is. I mean. Like you said, people, we're not condoning the use of those words. It's obviously a horrible event that's happened in the NFL. It's a mar on the NFL right now. I mean, that's all that people are talking about. It's honestly, it's it's distracting from what the NFL is. It's a sports league that people should be playing in. People have fun watching. People have fun playing the game. Uh, fantasy football is obviously huge. Uh, you're into it, right? Yeah, of course you are. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it's just it's it's a black spot right now on the NFL. Um, it's maybe maybe it's maybe it'll open up more stuff. We never know, but uh, it's obviously not a good thing. And uh, we hope it gets resolved soon, so we can get back to football. Yeah, I think right now the NFL is just trying to put put it in the back burner, like uh, move past it. Yeah. And uh, you know, move on to. I mean, not not fully move on, but keep it quiet. Yeah. Don't. Don't make it the focus. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, keeping with football, though. Um, any news in the NFL recently? Other than all this mess, I I'm personally excited for the uh, Kansas City um, Denver Broncos game. Yeah, Peyton. It's, it's the it's the best defense against the best offense. Yeah. I mean, in, in any sport, that's amazing. Um, honestly, I don't want people. I don't watch. I keep calling you people. That's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, um, 
If anybody actually watches this. <laughs> One day you all watch us. But um, I personally, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a full-on fan of the NFL. I follow it enough to have a conversation about it. I can actually carry on a conversation and know what I'm talking about. But personally, I like CFL better. NFL, it's good football. CFL, I think it's a bit better. I know I'm... Exactly. It's I mean, on one channel. Um, every game is on the same channel. I can watch as many games as I want. Uh, I know you're, you're not an NFL fan, but you're an Eagles fan. I'm an Eagles fan, yeah, mainly because my father is an, is an Eagles fan. Is an emails fan. Good job there, Matt. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a full on Philadelphia fan, you know. So, uh, like we probably can't watch those games every week because here in Canada. We have three stations that carry football. Oh, four or follow NFL, yeah. I mean, see. So there's like, there's like four games in there. Yeah, uh, at most. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, some nights you get one on every single channel. I mean, uh, obviously, um, what's what's the big night for it? Sunday. Sun Sunday Sunday night football is gonna have every channel is gonna have something so on it. Thursday night, <laughs> Sunday night, and uh, Monday night. Uh, always show in Canada. It's afternoon sometimes plays here. Sunday, Sunday afternoon. It's the Sunday afternoon games where uh, we probably we usually don't get to see like uh, San Diego. No, no, we're not going to see San Diego afternoon uh, games. Kansas City. Well, maybe this year because they're good. Yeah. Um, but like Miami, only when they play Buffalo or the Patriots. Yeah. Um, or the Jets, or not the Jets, the Giants. Giants. Possibly Denver because Denver's getting carried a lot Oakland, now. I no, no, you're not going to see Oakland. You're not going to see the Oakland in Canada um, unless they're playing a big team or oh, unless they're good. <laughs> Patriots. Patriots. Um, Bandwagon. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. So moving on to CFL. So, okay, CFL that is my personal personal place of expertise. CFL, big news in the CFL. Well, not big news, big weekend in the CFL. Uh, we have the East and West finals this weekend. Biggest one is obviously the East final. Hamilton Tigers taking on the Toronto Argonauts. Great rivalry. This goes back eons. Goes back. Well, I was surprised. Well, I was really surprised though when the schedule came out. The Labor Day Classic got cut. If you don't know what the Labor Day Classic is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Hamilton and Toronto always play on Labor Day. This year didn't happen. No. Maybe, maybe because of um, Hamilton's uh, current state, they're not actually playing in Hamilton. They're playing in Guelph at the University of Guelph. I don't, why aren't they playing at Mascot? Maybe McMaster doesn't have the big enough field. Do they even have a field? Yeah, they do. They, they, do? they won uh, the Vanier Cup like three, like three or two years ago. Okay, well, they don't play at McMaster. They don't play the Vanier. They play at wherever the wherever the um, Grey Cup is. Yeah. So last year was in Toronto. This year will be in Regina, I think. Should no, be. I meant, why doesn't Hamilton play? I'm not sure why they're not playing at uh, McMaster. I'm not, I'm not. I'm really not sure why they didn't play at McMaster. Um, maybe maybe it's exactly that. Maybe the field was just, just wasn't big enough for a CFL team. I mean, obviously Hamilton. That's really all they have there in terms of in terms of professional sport. They have they have a professional to other team. They have the Hamilton Bulldogs, AHL uh, affiliate of the Montreal Canadiens, um, which are a pretty good team. I'm not sure where they are in the standings this year. How are they doing? Can you check that quick? How are they doing? Two points ahead of the Suns. Two points ahead of Binghamton. Yeah, two points ahead of the Suns, one point back of Toronto. Uh, that's actually pretty. That's actually pretty incredible. Are they the division or is that conference? Um, is that AHL? No. That's NHL. Why are you looking at A? I wanted AHL. I said AHL. I wanted Hamilton. I'll look it up. Why do I keep getting airline stuff? I, I type in OHL.com. I get an airline thing. I don't know what that is. I got AHL. I got an airline thing. What is going on? Let's see. Uh, conference. The funny thing is, Leafs, right? Or the Marlies. They're in Toronto. Yeah. Toronto is in the East. Yeah, they they play in the West. West. The West Conference. Yeah, Toronto, <laughs> in the NHL for so long. All right. Let's see. Um, well, uh, let's see. Where is the Hamilton Bulldogs? They are. They're tied with the Toronto Marlies. Um, although they are placed in 12th because they played mm, two more games and uh, have one less win. We do. We keep tailing off. But Hamilton, it's it's um. That's not a mouse. 
Yeah. I went for a charger. <laughs> All right. Where were we? Where were we? CFL. Um. Battle of the QEW. Yeah. Great rivalry. I mean, these teams, they genuinely hate each other when they play. I mean, obviously, these players, they're good friends for the most part. I mean, that's like that in all sports. No one really, really hates each other except Canadian, U.S. women's hockey. They hate each other. Well, so or at least it appears like that. Yeah, as soon as it ends, hey, man, good job. <laughs> good job, good job, man. Yeah. So, uh, that's going to be a good game. It's at, uh, on Sunday at 12 o'clock, right? Yeah. Um, so it's actually at 1. 1? Yeah, 12, I think, 12 is the pregame. Pregame, pre-game show, yeah. And then that night is the Western Final, another great rivalry. Uh, Saskatchewan in Calgary. It's not as good as uh, the Battle of Alberta, Calgary, Edmonton, but obviously Edmonton crapped out this year. So, um, not as bad as Winnipeg. Winnipeg was probably the worst yeah. team. Winnipeg well, they were the worst team. Oh, the Banjo Bowl. I actually went to that game. Oh, yeah. yeah, the 2006 Great Cup here in Toronto. I actually was at that game. I was cheering. Was it 2007 or 2006? When was that? When was that? Yeah, I think it was 2007, actually, now that I think about it. A lot of Rough Riders fans were there. I was actually a Rough Riders fan for that day. For that day. Uh, Yeah, honorary fan. But yeah, Argos, going back to the East Final, are minus Chad Cackert, their all-star running back, which is not good. Yeah, Robert McCune, Sarge is out, but the Argos are not completely left hanging at the running back position. What's that kid's name? Uh, no, no, they're not going to use Steele. They're going to use the other kid, um, Jarius Norwood. And uh, it says here, Jarius Norwood and Curtis Steele will be filling in. Curtis Steele's actually a really nice guy. I met him. Yeah, he's, in a, he's a really nice guy. I met him actually probably the first practice, because I usually go to the Argos practices. They are open if you want to go. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Curtis Steele is a really nice guy. I met him actually for first practice with the Argos. I met him. Jarius Norwood, I've not met him. I'm sure he's a great guy. Our most, most CFL guys are nice guys. Uh, Chad Cackard, I met him too. But yeah, Curtis Steele, uh, he was he just wasn't he was getting yards, but just not enough of them on every carry. Jarius Norwood has a better has a better yards per carry. That's that's why they're putting him in. Carry, you're not gonna do very well no. Downs. Yeah, need... it's a lot tougher to get those yards in three downs. I, like, I, I watched uh, Curtis Steele's first game, his first start. On fire. Yeah, he, he was great. Had, he, he had like 120 total yards. He had like 90 rushing yards and a couple touchdowns. That was a great performance. But unfortunately, he's cooled down since yeah. then. I mean, uh, he's progressively he's just gone down. It's like um, another kid with the Argos, uh, uh, Zach Zach Caleros. Yeah. on fire that one game. And he's had, he's had spurts. He's had spurts. Uh, usually second half, he does great. But um, first half, I mean... No, no, no. I, you, know, you know who I'm... Uh, I'm excited to see um, John Childs. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's like John Childs. Right? <laughs> I mean, the guy, it's hard to defend against a guy like that when the guy can jump like 10 feet in the air. I mean, <laughs> when he's already 6-something and he can jump up to 10 feet, I mean, it's really, really hard to... Um, yeah, he's, he's a really nice guy. I met him, too. I met most of the Argos. Uh, John Charles, fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact Fridays. If I, <laughs> Except it's Saturday. <laughs> uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm probably like way, out of, way wrong here, but I'm pretty sure he went to uh, Peyton Manning's uh, college. Really? Yeah, and maybe, maybe I'm thinking of, of a different person, but there's someone in the CFL who was quarterback, and got moved to wide receiver. I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of the name. <laughs> He's a player of the Argos. In favor of Peyton Manning, and for obviously good reason. It might have been Charles, might have been Barnes. Um, might have been Barnes. He went, he went to Texas. I'm gonna... Yeah. Alright, well, obviously this week's going to be great. We're not going to talk just about the Argos. We're going to talk a little bit about the Thai Cats. I'm personally not a Thai Cats fan, but I know people who are, so they'll be happy to know that I will be talking about them. The Tiger Cats will be using, let's see, a um, little fun fact, well not really a fun fact, just a fact, um, two of last year's Grey Cup winning Argos are now on the Thai Cats. Brandon Isaac and Evan McCullough have now have switched sides, they are on the Hamilton Thai Cats, and will be coming back to Toronto to play on Sunday. What do you think about that? 
I was sad, sad to see Brandon Isaac. He was trading. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I liked him in the backfield. He, yeah. He was a big hitter, if not mistaken. From what I remember, he had, he's a good guy, but... Uh, Evan McCullough, not that big of a loss. Yeah. I was not a fan of him. Uh, it was just... As him on the defensive side, it just it wasn't happening. Just game after game, play after play. I mean, it just the, he was just not getting the uh, the right defensive edge. He wasn't he wasn't making the big plays that were necessary to keep the other teams from advancing. I mean, it's just play after play. I mean, pass after pass would get through. I mean, that's that can't happen in the CFL. I mean, in in a, in a league that's that's so dependent on the air game. Yeah, it's. It's really you got to be a top-notch defenseman to stay in the league, and obviously he's still in the league, but he's with a different team. Yeah. I believe that's actually why they did they trade him or did they let him go? Not sure. I'm not sure. I, yeah. I, it happened in the off season, so we we, we really don't know. Yeah. Great player. Great player. No, they moved on from that. I think they did very well afterwards for themselves. Yeah. So let's get into the uh, Calgary. The West final, yes. I did it again, people. I did it again. Charger is not the mouse. I need to remember that. Uh, <laughs> Don't you laugh. Yeah, <laughs> Shut up. So, uh, oh, oh, we have our first caller. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just got the call coming in. Uh, as you can see, we're a very amateur um, operation. And Adrian can't figure out where yeah. the volume is. <laughs> okay, so Moving on. Kind of yeah. I I like it. I like how Kevin Glenn. I think in the CFL you need someone with a veteran presence. I mean, Bo, Bo Levi Mitchell, incredible. Yeah. Just an incredible young man. Red oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ottawa Red Blacks coming into the league. Uh, expansion draft coming up. Who will be picked? Who will be taken? Because you can only protect what one one quarterback. Yeah, I think it's one quarterback. It will be Bo Levi Mitchell if they do choose to pick that perf that quarterback. It was going to be Zach Caleros, but it would probably be Mitchell. But anyway, moving on. Uh, this game, I think it's going to be great. It's going to be cold, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we are in. Is I think it's... Well, who finished better? Saskatchewan did. Uh, let's see, let's see. Who played last week for... Uh, okay, it's in Calgary. Um, because Calgary is on the right side over on the screen, so that means they are home. Yeah. So, I think it's gonna be a great game. I don't really follow the West all that much, so I can't really talk about it all my all that much. I know Kevin Glenn has another chance to go back to the Grey Cup, which has got to be exciting for him. It's got to be exciting for the. Um... He played for Hamilton, didn't he? Yeah, he used to play for Hamilton. Uh, that they did that one-on-one -on -one trade um between Burris and um, yeah. Smiling Hank for uh, Glenn. Um, but yeah, it should be a great game. Glenn, as long as he plays the way that he normally played, that he has played in the past, he plays his game. I think I think the um the Stamps could upset. I really do, because going in, they are obviously the underdog. Not that big of an underdog, because the West was just a powerhouse this year. Uh, obviously the Saskatchewan. Stamps are the, underdogs? the Stamps will be the underdogs. <laughs> Saskatchewan finished great this year. They finished first, didn't they? I'm not sure. Did they? Or did Calgary eke him out in the end? Let me let's see standings. Uh oh no, Calgary beat the Calgary. Um, yeah, wow, not actually a lot too. <laughs> I, think, I think they'll probably be underdogs because of uh, Darius Durant. Yeah, yeah, Durant is just a great quarterback. Great cup twice. They lost to Montreal. Oh, that that game, that game. Paul Apolice will forever be known for throwing down his hat in the booth. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Darius Durant is uh, Dar Darian, Darius. Is it Darius or Darian? Darian. Darian Durant. Yeah, that's kind of better. <laughs> you are. Um, you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that. <laughs> we we're the only two here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's a he's a great quarterback. Um, great arm. He's got he's obviously got the experience. And um, like I said, both two great great quarterbacks. It, I think it's going to be an incredible game. I will, for one, be watching. Uh, I'll obviously be watching the Ty Cats Argos game. Should be a great weekend for the CFL. You know who I really like on Saskatchewan? Who? Uh, Craig Butler. Have you heard of him? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard a little bit of Craig Western. Butler. He, uh, <laughs> oh, went to Western. He's a linebacker now. He, he was played safety. I go to York, so I don't really like Western. Yeah, alright. <laughs> um, so, the, the story he played safety uh, last year. 
and uh, this year he got moved to linebacker, and they're telling a story where uh, he tried linebacker in college, played one snap, and got pancake blocked. <laughs> no. Nope. And, uh, and uh, so he's doing a pretty good job there. I, I, like, I like him as a player. He's a, uh, he's a good guy to watch. Mm -hmm. But yeah, should be should be good. Too too bad for uh, the two other teams that didn't make it past the first BC and Montreal. They <laughs> screw Montreal exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly, exactly. What do you think about Calvillo? Gonna retire? Uh, probably. Yeah, I think he's gonna retire. It's got if not one more season, maybe. Who's that other kid that they have? Uh, Newswinder or Nyswinder? Or that other kid, Marsh? I think his last name is. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, there's a few Heisman winners in the uh, in the CFL. <laughs> um, so yeah, they got they got a lot of options, and I don't know if I don't know if Calvio has the gas left in the tank to come out. Did you break that? No, I didn't break it. <laughs> <laughs> it screws back on. <laughs> I don't think he has the gas left in the tank. I think you're exactly right. I don't think he's got it after this concussion. It's it's really tough. To, obviously, you know a good amount about concussions. Um, it's it's really tough to come back. I've never had one. Uh, thank God. But um, I've I've had my head clocked a few times. It's not a good feeling. I've had whiplash a couple times. It's not a good feeling at all. Uh, you know it instantly that something's wrong. And for an older guy, like how old is he? Like he's got me in his thirties. In the CFL, I mean his. Montreal defense was lacking a bit this year, yeah. so um, well, or Montreal offense was lacking this year. Um, the offensive line was just eh most of the year, so a lot of guys were getting to Calvillo. So um, if that happens again next year and he's playing, I don't like his chances for lasting very long. So, like you said, I think he's retiring this year. I don't think he's got the gas. And, uh, like they have that wiser whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they got Marsh, they got Troy Smith. Uh, Troy Smith actually looked pretty good. It's not like they're lacking for, for quarterbacks. They've got yeah, enough. I mean, yeah. And I, I feel like they're good. The quarterbacks they have are good enough to play in the CFL next year, but not good enough that the Red Blacks will take them. No, <laughs> no. I, I think um, I think Montreal's fine in that uh, exactly. in that so, sense. Uh, I don't know. I think they just need to get the offense on the same page and they'll probably do well. Yeah. Yeah, back to their old winning ways. Don't they have... To the bane uh, of Toronto Argonauts fans. <laughs> have, uh, what's the Canadian who used to... Running back, who used to be in Edmonton? Jerome Messam. Yeah, Jerome Messam. I don't know what happened to him this year. He, just, just disappeared. He, he went to the NFL for a bit. <laughs> we all know about players in the CFL that went to the NFL. Uh, he went to the NFL for a bit. Well, Joe Theismann played really well in the NFL. Um, but, well, okay, so last year... Uh, I know where he lived. Edmonton... Got rid of Joe Messon, well, didn't get rid of him. Jerome Messon went to the NFL, and they had Hugh Charles, I think? Yeah. Uh, Hugh Charles played well, and then they got Corey Boyd from Toronto. Corey Boyd! And then they had Jerome <laughs> Messon <laughs> back. So That's how we talked, it was funny. So, I don't know, I, I like Jerome Messon, obviously, because he's huge, and he's Canadian. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know, I just didn't hear anything from him this year. I was thinking, well, maybe not, because he's not much wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if the if Montreal gets everything together again, their running back, their offense just gets back into shape like it used to be the the last few years. Obviously, the uh, the retirement of uh, Ben Cahoon. Cahoon. <laughs> that was that was a big loss on the uh, on the offensive side, but uh, this year is just lacking. And if they get back to uh, business next year, they'll be great. I think they I think they got a really good team. Their uh, their defense was iffy this year. The whole team was. It's all right. It was just it was an average. It was a really average year from the um, from the Montreal Alouettes. I mean, especially also the loss of uh, Mark Tressman. Is yeah, yeah, Mark Tressman le leaving. He's coaching Chicago now. In yeah. The NFL. How's he doing there? How's Chicago uh, doing? They start off three zero. They're like six and three, six and four now. And they've they've sputtered. They got a chance still. They still have a chance. They got a chance. Honestly, like I never had an affiliation with the Cubs. Obviously, no. they had Brian Urlacher. Yeah. And he was so you mean good. the Bears? Yeah, the Bears. Yeah, the Bears. The Bears. <laughs> like, how could you not be a fan? Yeah, the Cubs are baseball. <laughs> Did I say Cubs? Yeah, you said the Cubs. <laughs> I never had an affiliation <laughs> with the Cubs. <laughs> Freudian slip. Mr. Um, Irrelevant. Uh, so yeah, I think this year I'm a, I'm a bit of a Bears fan just because... The Bears. Coming from the CFL. <laughs> I gotta say it. You gotta say it if you're... 
My dead cop. <laughs> the Red Blacks, yes. The Ottawa Red Blacks. A lot of people yeah. are thinking, because I'm a Senator Sam, a lot of people think that I'm going to switch switch teams to the Red Blacks. Not going to happen, people. Not, not going to happen. The Red Blacks, obviously, they're a brand, brand new team. I got actually, they got a kickoff countdown going on right now. 227 days, zero hours, somehow. <laughs> Yeah, 21 minutes and 36 seconds and counting. So we are getting closer to their kickoff in Ottawa. I think they'll be playing where? At the, um, at the Civic Park. No you have no idea where that is. Uh, the first thing I just want to say about that is, how the hell is the schedule going to work out? They're going to have, one team's going to have a bucket every single week. <laughs> they have an odd number of teams. It's, it's going to be interesting. I think uh, Winnipeg's getting moved to the east. Or the west, I mean. The west. Yeah, that makes sense. They're moving to the west, but then you'll still have... But an odd number of teams. There's, there's an odd number of teams. How did it work out before? Because I never. I don't remember. <laughs> it was too long ago. Right? When was the last time they were in uh, as the uh, the Renegades? Uh, mid 2000s when they uh, folded again, again. Because you know we say again. When have they been like, off and on for so many years? So See if they last to this time. <laughs> like I, I haven't seen the schedule. I really no, no, seen. haven't seen it all. Oh, they're playing at Lansdowne Park. Okay. What I, what I. My mind is like baffled of how that's gonna work out because I feel like the league's gonna the season's gonna have to run on for like another few weeks, right? For every team to play eighteen games. Yeah. So that, that's weird. Or maybe maybe that one bye week nobody gets by. Maybe. Well, I mean, no, but one team's obviously gonna get. The yeah, yeah. All right, they haven't released the schedule yet. I don't believe I can't find it. So um, we'll comment that on a later podcast. By the way, this will be happening what every Friday, every Saturday, uh, something like that. Friday yeah. We'll yeah. School exactly. We got. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I I am fairly impressed. I I know it's mid podcast and off topic, but you we've only sworn twice, and that was you both times. <laughs> well, <laughs> I need to watch my language. I think uh, I think we're doing pretty good tonight. Yeah, I think we're doing all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, back to the Leave a comment, people. Okay. I keep calling you people. You can comment on that if you want, people. There you go, people. people. Purple so, people okay. in front of uh, 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 She looks strange right. to me. Um, so That's my singing skills, people. What do you think? Endorsement. Yeah, Endorsement. Bobby Ryan has come out and said that he is a Ottawa Red Blacks fan. Um, in response to his tweet a couple days ago, the Red Blacks wanted him, obviously, to be a uh, fan. I mean, big player in Ottawa right now. Um... Doing a lot of good things in Ottawa right now, so uh, obviously it's a big fit that he's going to be a uh, big fan for the uh, Red Blacks. Yeah. What do you think about the expansion draft? Who are they going to take? Draft, uh, quarterback. Quarterback, Bo Levi Mitchell. Bo Levi Mitchell, if he's not protected. If he's not. We're not sure who they're going to protect. I mean, they could they could, they could, could protect... Um, I already forgot his name. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Drew Tate? No, not Drew Tate. The other guy. Oh, Kevin Glenn. There we go. <laughs> It's, it's a toss-up, because I think they're all good enough to play in the NFL. Exactly. Uh, well, not the NFL. I mean, CFL. But, um... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I think, honestly, their second pick, um, who's the guy, Mike Riley in Edmonton? Yep. Uh, if they don't protect him, they might take him. Or Zach Kolaros, because obviously... I think Kolaros might be taken. Uh, he's a good, he's a good um, second quarterback. He's a good, um, he's a good guy to come in. To a game, he's. I don't think he's ready to be a starter just yet. Obviously, the season, he finally got his chance. Yeah, he's still he's still very very young. Like maybe um, playing sort of without you know a future Hall of Famer. On exactly. I mean, you got Ricky Ray as your number one, and you're in the biggest. Because you're in the biggest city, not the biggest market, but the biggest city. Yeah. Lights are always going to be on you. Yeah, and um, if they get Bully by Mitchell and Zach Claris, it'll like obviously they're going to compete for the number one job. But it'll be different because in Toronto, Zach Claris isn't competing for the number one job. He doesn't have it at all. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, no matter, he could throw and do you even know? seven touchdowns <laughs> a game, and he's not when Ricky Ray's out, and he's not going to get the job because it's Ricky Ray. Yeah. Do you even know who the third and fourth string guys um, are? <laughs> yeah, Jerry's Jackson. Oh, yeah, Jackson. No, not anymore. Not anymore. He's gone. Um, they, they had a guy from, like, Texas for a while. I remember that. Um, I got the roster right okay. here. Oh, uh, let's see. Quarterbacks. I want the practice roster, but it's not giving me that. Um, that's my other voice. 
Why is Ricky Ray on the injured list? Oh, because they have, probably haven't um, updated from last week when they didn't play any of the guys. QBs, QBs, QBs. I want QB. That's DB, not QB. That's CB, not QB. QB. Trevor Harris, who's used a lot as a... Um, a sure yardage? Not sure yardage. Um, placeholder. Or, or placeman or yeah. something like that. I think that's a... Placeholder, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, Mitchell Gale. Mitchell Gale. That's right. I met him, too. I met a lot Is of our guys. Is he from Texas? No, he no. played in uh, Abilene Christian. Not Maybe that is in Texas. I don't know. <laughs> sounds like he could be in Texas. <laughs> sounds a lot like he could be from Texas. Um, there's got to be one more. I think there is. I don't think so. Are those, are those oh, no. Gale is the last one. Yeah. 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 So, All right. So, yeah. So, like, if it's Bobby by Mitchell and Zach Claros, it'll be... they got a good quarterback. they got a good yeah. uh, quarterback core right there. Um, Plus, obviously, younger guys that are underneath them. Yeah, but, um, obviously, it's like uh, healthy competition. It, the saying goes like, uh, competition breeds success, right? So, one of them's going to do well there. So, it just depends. <laughs> exactly, I mean... <laughs> which one gets the shot, right? Yeah. Obviously, going to play at Lansdowne Park, now that I've found that. Not Civic Park, that actually doesn't exist. Civic Arena at Lansdowne Park. <laughs> well, moving on. What about, what about other players? Other players, like, running backs, who will not be protected. Curtis Steele could go yeah. to the... Uh, or, or, Norwood. or Norwood. Yeah, um... They're going to yeah. they're gonna protect Cackert. That's going to happen. Argo, staying with the Argos, they're going to protect Owens. They're going to protect Ray. They're going to play... How many players can you protect other than, the, like, per position? It's not... It can't be just one for, like, this, especially for, like, receiver yeah, core. It's just, it's just one for the quarterbacks, yeah. Like for wide receivers, probably two or three. Yeah. Um, probably two or three with each. Yeah. Um, so obviously you can just strip a team. I'm interested and, in who uh, Hamilton's going to protect at running backs. So yeah. CJ Gable and uh, who's the other guy? Uh, oh, I know his name too. <laughs> uh, one second. Clearly unprepared for this. But, uh, yeah. CJ Gable, uh, he's done. He's done work this year. He's done pretty well. Oh yeah. He's a rookie, right? Yeah, I think he's a rookie this year. Uh, let's see. Roster. Rafter. Rafter. Uh, running backs. RB. That's what I'm looking for. QB this time. Chevron Walker. Or Siobhan Walker. Siobhan. Not, Siobhan. Siobhan. not Chevron. Siobhan. It's a gas company. <laughs> CJ Gable. And uh, I think there's one more. Those two guys have been really good for them this year. So yeah. It'll be interesting to see who they protect. Yeah, it'll be. It'll actually really be like, really interesting. Um, They've also got Tavoy Moore. He's on the practice roster, so he's obviously not gonna. He's not gonna play. He's a no name. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sticking with uh, what are we gonna move on to? Baseball? You want to talk about baseball? Other teams? You want to talk about racing? Pro racing? Okay, so Another area of my expertise. My I'm not. I'm not a racing fan. You're I'm, not. I'm not. You suck. I, I, I don't hate this. Okay, I don't hate Formula One or. Uh, Sebastian Vettel doing it again. He won pole today too. Cool. Uh, so, for the. Uh, <laughs> The race in Austin, the U.S. Grand Prix. Um, I actually didn't know that he won that. Um, let's okay, see. So, so yeah. I, I, I don't hate racing. I hate NASCAR. Why do you hate NASCAR? Why do you, why do you hate NASCAR? NASCAR is great. It's driving in an oval. Like, so what? How hard is that? So what? You're driving in an oval at, what, 200 miles an hour? Yeah, like, you just have to have, like balls to do that. I mean, yeah, e everybody special. is obviously waiting for a crash. Yeah. That is the, probably the biggest attraction to, to NASCAR. But it's also good racing. It's it's not like IndyCar, and it's not like F1. These are cars that you can actually drive. They are stock car. They're obviously not stock, but they're called stock car. Stock body. It's a stock body, for the most part. Uh, so you can actually go out and buy, what do they race? They race, um, they race Fords, they race Chevys, um, I think Toyota got into it. Uh, I think they raced the Camry in Toyota. <laughs> the Ford Taurus, I believe, or the Focus. It's Focus or Taurus? It used to be the Taurus, I know for sure. And the Chevy something. I think it's the Impala, actually. I think it is the Impala. Yeah, it used to be the Impala. Uh, the Impali. What is the Impali? <laughs> Wait, sell me on NASCAR. Sell you on NASCAR. What would you say? One. Great racing. Two, actual fights. Not like in the, uh... Okay. Like, they take their helmets off okay. when they Once fight. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You got Tony Stewart throwing his helmet at another car. That's awesome, Tony Stewart. I really wish you were racing. If you are listening, perhaps. 
<laughs> very, very unlikely. <laughs> but if you do listen, I really wish you didn't get hurt. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, love your racing. It's great. Um, but I had to say that. It's a fanboy moment. I love it. Love Tony Stewart. Um, but yeah, NASCAR, it's just, it's great. It's good racing. It's, it's, as, even if it's in an oval, they're not all on oval. There are what, four, four street courses, I think? There's Watkins Glen, and they, there's Infineon. They actually play like two a year, don't they? No, there's first four races in, on road courses every year, okay. and then the rest are oval. But oval races, I mean, look at Daytona, look at Talladega, Talladega, the big one. Look at even the smaller ovals, look at Bristol, look at uh, Dover, look at Darlington. Great, great courses. Also, my, my second view with NASCAR, I, I don't think I've told you this, is... They're wasting so much gas. <laughs> fuel efficiency. We only have a limited amount of fossil fuels to use. That's why they use ethanol. I, I get that they make That's money. why they burn ethanol. They don't they burn do gasoline. Are you sure? They burn <laughs> ethanol. Okay. But, I mean, like, that's just, I it's a lot cleaner, but it's still it's a waste of gas. But like, It's not a waste. It's I racing. It's entertainment. I get that. It's entertainment. They make money off So F1 is a waste of gas. So Indy is a waste of gas. Yes. It is, but it to me, in my mind, there's some skill in turning Oh, yeah, there's more skill, obviously, involved in being an IndyCar driver and obviously an F1 driver. F1's the pinnacle. Um, it's, it's the pinnacle of racing in the world. Uh, it is probably, it's not... In my personal f- ranking of top, um, top like, series in uh, racing, uh, top five, let's do a top five. I got um, IndyCar, number one. I love Indy. Yeah. James Hinchcliffe. Great hey. work. Great work. <laughs> ah, shout out to Jane Dan. Another shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Good shout job. Out. <laughs> shout out. Right. Uh, number two, NASCAR. Three, F1. Four, I like American Le Mans. Okay. Believe it or not, I actually am a fan of one of the fans, few fans of uh, American Le Mans. I also like, uh, what's my fifth? I don't even, do I even really have a fifth? Uh, <laughs> no, I watch drag racing a lot. I love drag racing. I mean, come on, I mean, what's not, what you, <laughs> these cars, if you're, if something's wrong, they blow up. Yeah, if they if you go perfect, they go how fast, like what, 300 miles an hour in how many seconds? <laughs> uh, drag racing to me, it's so, it's, it's, uh, you, even like the funny stuff, it's not even really the real racing, it's just like, I've been to it, I've been to a drag race, they put a jet engine on a bus, a school bus <laughs> with a jet engine. This thing's spitting fire out the back, and it's whipping down. Like I want to be on that because I'd get to school like that. It, I just snapped drag, if you didn't hear that. Drag racing is the equivalent of the 100 meter dash. <laughs> so hard for seven seconds of your life. Well, it's like sevens rugby. I know guys that play sevens rugby. The games are 14 minutes. They psych themselves up <laughs> all day long. They wear their rugby jerseys to school. They they go, hey, yeah, rugby. We're skipping class because. Because we're rugby, no, no, not all players skip skip class. Uh, actually, none of them that I know skip class. Um, they actually are pretty good guys. I know them; they're all fun. But uh, yeah, they psych themselves up all day long for 14 minutes of play. That's it. You know what I just realized? What? Did we introduce ourselves? Did we? Oh God. Oh well. <laughs> Suck it. Well, I'm Matt. And I'm Adrian. And you're listening to the Adrian and Matt podcast. Yup. 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 Take it easy, man. That was loud. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> Sorry, headphone users. Sorry, <laughs> people. <laughs> There's one more thing I wanted to talk about. I can't remember. What about NASCAR? No. What do you think about Indy? Eyes out IndyCar. What do you think about that? I don't know. I, don't, I just don't watch racing. I love IndyCar. IndyCar is great, great race. It mixes NASCAR and F1. It's like... Especially on the ovals, I love the ovals. I mean, the street courses they have their they had good. I like I only like four street courses. I like obviously Toronto, uh, Saint Petersburg. I love because I've actually been there. I've been on those streets. Um, I like Houston, and I really like Barber, Barber Motorsports uh, Park. It's probably one of the best racing venues in the world. I I love that place. I've actually been there. It's it's great great racing. Um, I love when they used to race at Laguna Seca. I think they used to race there. Uh, great, great course there. But the oval courses, I mean, it's so fast. I mean, obviously we've had some a color, little bit of colored past with uh, the ovals. Um, dangerous Dan Weldon. 
yeah, it's dangerous. Dan Weldon, uh, unfortunately, uh, killed in a crash at uh, Las Vegas a couple years ago. But it's still great, great racing, and I just I, I love Indy. That's that's just flat out. That's what I love. I love IndyCar. I I, I I'm more of an Indy fan than an NASCAR. Fan, but, <laughs> but you love F1. I get it. I, Favorite team? I don't, I don't love F1. I don't. I just don't watch racing. You don't watch racing. It's not my if team. you had to pick a team, what would you pick? For racing? Yeah. No. For for F1. F1. I, Ferrari, Red Bull, oh, uh, Mercedes, McLaren. Uh, Force India. <laughs> Force India. Force India, of course. Uh, probably Ferrari, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'm a Ferrari fan. I like uh, Fernando Ferrari. Fernando Alonso and uh, Felipe Massa doing great things he's for a, Ferrari. He's a Vettel's on the Red Bull again with uh, Mark Webber. Mark Webber, right? Yeah. Uh, Mark Webber is uh, Swiss, right? I think so. Uh, Vettel's Swiss? German? Something like that. Yeah, some, something European. <laughs> All right, moving on. You want to talk about baseball? Oh, Let's yeah, get to baseball. Right. Let's get to baseball. <laughs> so it's been uh, a little over an hour, so we we'll, we'll end with baseball. Yeah, yeah. For today, anyway. Mm -hmm. Um. So obviously we live in Toronto, and uh, so we're gonna talk about the Jays and how awful their season. <laughs> I think we're we're like a month and a half late commenting on their yeah. terrible season, but obviously uh, we weren't around. No, no. To talk about it. So let's talk about it now. And very obviously, one name that stands out among the most in terms of being probably the worst player on the team, Jeff Johnson. Jeff? Was it Jeff? It's Josh. 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 Johnson. I thought it was Jeff. Oh well. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because he's not a Jay. He's not a. He's not a Blue Jay anymore. He's not going to be a no, he's not ever going to be a Blue Jay ever again. Still. Yes. He's a. He's a free agent. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, did you, how many Jays games did you go to this I went to four this year, four? and they lost every single <laughs> one of them. So I, I saw them play Oakland once, I saw them play, um, what else did I see them play? I saw them play the Rays, I saw them play the Yankees, and I saw them play the Orioles. So obviously great, great division rivals for the most part, except Oakland. I mean, Oakland was a good oh, team. Good. Yeah, I saw Bartolo Colon, um, uh, so, pitch that was really that was a, that was an experience that was pretty cool. So I I went to ten games this year. Ten. The, the oh flex yeah, pack, the flex right? pack. Yeah. Um. So I I just before I forget, great the greatest moment I had there. I too. I was at I was at the game where the fan jumped onto the field. Because <laughs> there was two that game, and I don't condone people jumping on the fans. <laughs> but it's great field, entertainment. But it's hilarious. <laughs> and this guy slid into second base, ran to the center field wall, and tried to climb it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not condoning this, but oh my god, that was hilarious. Yeah, that was, um, it was pretty funny. So that was uh, just before I forget. Second moment was uh, against San Francisco, and uh, Henry Blanco was in uh, right field. That's where my seats were. Right field. I lied. Left field. Good job. <laughs> I'm mixed up. Shut up. So <laughs> my seats were in left field, and uh, we, we had some hecklers heckling him. And there's a whole group of them. Yeah, I've been I've been in those same situation where there's been guys drunk yeah. as could be yeah. heckling some player. I was part of a heckling crowd one time. I went with my uh, with my summer camp that I work at. Um, do I work at a summer camp? Do you? No. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. Anymore. But then I was I was at a summer I was at a summer camp. Oh wait, no, I still work at a summer camp. What do I think? What do you, I, I work at a summer camp, okay. and we went to a Jays game. Yeah. And they were playing Baltimore, and that's when uh, the right fielder was um, P.A. P.A.? P.A. Pie. But Pi. Yeah. Was it P.A. or was it Pi? I think it was P.A. P.A. But, like, but it, it was spelt Pi on the back, and we just... It's pie. We pounced on that. And heckling's always funny. I mean, maybe the players don't like it. Maybe they do. But <laughs> we actually got them to turn around yeah. because we started chanting, Pi sucks! Pi sucks! <laughs> All right, so my, my moment is similar. Uh, so Henry Blanco, <coughs> sorry, Henry Blanco in left field. You're not excused. Shut up. <laughs> um, so Henry Blanco in left field, and uh, these guys are heckling for six innings in the seventh inning. Um, it, uh, one fan goes, hey, Blanco, tip your cap if you can hear us. <laughs> that was hilarious. That was great. I love when the, uh, the players give, uh, give I, notes I think, to the fans. I like think the players. best instance of that was it Shaw on the um on the Blackhawks? Where there was like, was he on the Blackhawks? What, when? When that guy um when he was heckling him. Puck? Yeah, and then uh, and then Steve Sullivan, Steve Sullivan not yeah, Shaw. Shaw. <laughs> yeah. 
It was still funny, man. It was it was still funny. That, that was <laughs> the same guy. Sullivan gets hit in the fucking face for you. For those of you who don't know, who don't know. And then uh, some guys heckling him about a cut. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of a period, he gets hit. The fan gets hit by the. Steve <laughs> Sullivan comes and gets hey. cut in the exact same yeah. spot. I mean, it was just perfect. <laughs> It was waiting to be written. Yeah. That was hilarious. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Jays' terrible season. Yeah, Jays' terrible season. Uh, it was it was truly... Obviously, at the start of the year, Jays making blockbuster trades, making blockbuster acquires. Uh, Jose Reyes coming in. Uh, he was probably one of the bigger fielders, but obviously biggest biggest upgrade was in pitching. Yeah. Okay, so hold on. I have a beef with the R.A. Dickey trade. Um, and I'm... How did that trade go down? It was I'm, too long ago. <laughs> close to a year late on this one, yeah. for my comments. But I hated the trade because the Jays gave up their top pitching prospect <laughs> and their top catching prospect for a pitcher who's only going to pitch for them for three years. Yeah. Because he's going to retire in a few years. He's going like, to retire. Yeah. And they got, they got Josh Tolley just to catch him because yeah. he caught knuckleball and J.P.R. and C.B.A. J.P.R. and C.B.A. couldn't. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't catch anything. Um, God, he couldn't hit anything, couldn't catch okay, anything. Oh, he couldn't hit a catch a beach ball. <laughs> I, I, I love J.P. He's a uh, great player. He's a great player. He's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's New Yorker, from, I think. No, he's from Florida. He sounds like right. he's. Oh, he sounds like he's from New York. No, he's got his... No, he sounds like he's from New York. He's got, he's got like a... Okay, it's like a Cuban accent. A Cuban accent? I don't, I don't, I don't hear a Cuban accent. What is a Cuban accent? It's Spanish. It's not Cuban. It's, okay, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, yeah, terrible season. But hey, I will take over your country. Yeah. <laughs> so. I am Castro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, the trade, I mean, it, it, it didn't make sense to me that they would give up uh, Noah Syndergaard, who uh, is a big six foot six power arm, who could have, he could have been the next Roy Holiday for us. Uh, power pitcher, strikeout pitcher, ace, ace of the bullpen. Oh, yeah, bullpen. the bullpen. Good job. Five, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, uh, Travis Dar. I I understand them trading Travis Darno because it was him or JP, right? Uh, you couldn't you couldn't play both. Uh, they they stayed with JP, and so my my thing with the Dickey trade was I'm not saying that they shouldn't have gotten gone out and gotten Dickey. I'm not saying that they should have traded Darno. Because they would have had to trade him or JP. I'm just saying, don't give up a potential franchise catcher for a guy who's only going to pitch three years. I mean, yeah, it's just common sense. You don't go after a guy that's going to retire. I mean, if, especially with, like, you go after him if he if he's a great player. Obviously, yeah. Cy Young winner. Uh, was he a Cy Young winner? Yeah, yeah he's a uh, Cy Young well, winner. Well, that's the thing. He also won the Cy Young in, in the NL. Yeah, the yeah, that's a, that's a big jump. I mean, people think, oh, it's just baseball and everything. It's a big a difference, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, like a lot of people were saying, uh, oh, Dickey's only had one good year. That's not true. He had uh, three good years of uh, the Mets, if I'm not mistaken. But he actually pitched well before he won the Cy Young. But again, that was in the NL. Stop on screen that. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was in the NL. So, um, he he pitched for Texas earlier on in his career, and he he's never had success in the AL. And this year. Uh, towards the end of the season, he pitched all right, but the beginning was a debacle. He gave up like 20 runs in his first like six or seven innings pitch, and he never made it to the fifth inning in his first like five starts. Right? Right. It was terrible. I was at my the first game I went to this year was the 12-4 loss to Boston <laughs> when he started. Do you remember that one? Do you remember that one? That was the one where the fan ran onto the. Yeah. Field. Um, <laughs> so I mean. Like, I don't want to call Dickie out, because he, he's a great guy. You can't deny it. No, he, great guy. He's an amazing guy. Um, and he, he is a good pitcher. Um, like, he's, I think he's the only pitcher in the majors throwing the knuckleball. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to be successful with. But he, he just, he, you know, I mean, sort of like, I have a beef with the train, not with him. Yeah. And, uh... That, that was my problem. Yeah. I mean, right now, actually, the Arizona Fall League Championship is going on, right. believe it or not. Yes, there is something called the Fall League. It's like um, Dominican Winter League. Yeah. Uh, Jays have an academy down there, yeah. as, as well as a bunch of other players. A lot of good players coming out from uh, the, from the uh, Dominican Republic. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, like what you said, I have a beef with the trade. I don't really have a beef with uh, the player. Um, honestly, the I almost called them the Leafs. Wow, <laughs> the Jays were just just disappointing. Yeah, and I mean also, just sorry, just disappointing the yeah. entire season long. I mean, they had that one incredible run. What was it? Like how many games in a row? Like. Yeah, 10 or, 11. 10 or 11 in a row. I mean, and everybody was like, oh my god, they're going all the way. They're going. Back on the bench. Yeah, I mean, off, like, all right, let's get I have a problem with play with fans that are like that. I mean, f fans that jump back on the bandwagon like that, that say like, oh, the second that they lose, oh, these guys are awful. I'm never watching them again. This is awful. They're so bad. And then the second they start winning, they're back They're back for, the, for, for them. It's like, stay with the team. Be loyal. I mean... Or if you're going to leave, if you're going to leave as a, as a fan, then leave. Yeah. Don't come back saying, oh, I never left. You know, like, yeah, you left. So don't, uh, don't be like that. The problem I had with them this year was uh, bringing in John Gibbons. To yeah. And, and, like, I, I, I don't know, like, the, with the Jays' problems weren't necessarily with John Gibbons. No. Uh, they had injury problems. They had pitching problems. No, they had starting pitching problems because their bullpen was phenomenal. Yeah. It was, That's the one bright spot. In this in this past season, their bullpen night after night after night was just. I mean, they were overworked, and they still yeah, did great. After the All Star break, they they collapsed a bit. Not not a huge collapse. No, but they did. And can you blame them? They pitched. I I feel like this obviously is not true, but I feel like they pitched more than the start. Yeah, <laughs> it just feels like that. Yeah, because like. Like it seemed like every other. I mean, how often did you see Jansen? I mean, like <laughs> yeah, he pitched so much. I mean, like. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah. really hard to watch this year. Yeah. Um, but back to John Gibbons. Like, it, it wasn't his fault, but he was he was managing Double A before this year. Yeah. And and to make that that jump back into he wasn't the right fit all those years ago. Yeah. So why bring him back? Because exactly, A. A. Alex Anthopoulos was a fan. of Alcoholics his. Anonymous. A. <laughs> uh, a. Was a fan of him, uh, and obviously he brought him in. Um, but I don't know, like. Again, it's not my beef isn't with Gibbons because he didn't do anything wrong this year. No, but I feel like he didn't do anything wrong, but he didn't do very much well. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, if you, if they, like, um, oh, who's the guy who manages Cleveland now? We used to manage. Ah, uh, Francona. Yeah, Terry Francona. Yeah. He he was available for a bit if the Leafs could have pounced on him. The Leafs. Uh, <laughs> 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 the Jays could have on him. Um. But yeah, like I feel, I feel like they got a small manager for a big team. <laughs> By the way, Jay's prospects right now are playing for the Salt River Rafters. I don't think they actually made it into the finals. But oh wait, one second. Just to just to completely take out from what you were saying. Uh pretty much done. S U R and M S S. What are those? We got the uh, Mesa Solar Sox. Okay. Uh, those teams are the Angels, the A's, the Cubs, the Nationals, or the Natinals. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best wardrobe malfunctions in sports ever, and the Tigers. Versus the, let's see, what was S-U-R? Um, S-U-R. Could be the uh, Surprise Saguaros. <laughs> the Scottsdale Scorpions, or the Salt, it's obviously not the Salt River Raptors. And I believe it is the Surprise Saguaros, uh, which is the Brewers, the... Indians, Oy Oyers, <laughs> Orioles, <laughs> Rangers, and the Red Sox. So if you want to check that out, check it out. Yeah. Um, I feel like they just depleted their prospects. Oh, yeah, definitely. Trades. They traded Hechevaria, um, Syndergaard, And obviously, Darnell. with all the, um, all the call-ups in the late yeah. season, the, the uh, Bisons had no chance of winning. I mean, I don't know where they finished. I don't know if they had a chance anyway, but... They, After they, all the players know. called up, it just wasn't happening. They they were actually one win away. Really? What happened was they needed to win their last three games of the season. And they lost all three. Because they were facing the team they needed to pass. <laughs> and they had to win all three, and they lost one. So they didn't make it. <laughs> oh. Something, something uh, like that. That's close. Wow. All right. But well. Kawasaki? Kawasaki. Munenori Kawasaki. My, Highlight of the year. I mean. My, my, my favorite moment was... Uh, his walk-off win against Baltimore. Oh, definitely. I was there. Definitely. Oh, it was electric. He, <laughs> he is Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> he is Japanese. <laughs> I'm Kawasaki. I'm Japanese. 
the, my favorite moments were when he was doing the cameos as the um, as the reporter. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> or his dancing. Yeah. His pre-game dancing. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Hilarious. Uh, they did. They they got rid of him though. They yeah. Bring him back. That's sad. I know. But, but honestly, like okay, <laughs> the thing was uh, when when uh, Reyes got hurt, they had uh, Bonifacio and Kawasaki, right? And people were like, oh, Kawasaki can't hit. He's two hundred hitter. Um, I I heard some. Uh, I was watching a Blue Jays game with the Texas commentary, and <laughs> they said uh, Kawasaki, the most popular two hundred hitter in baseball. <laughs> um, but his hits were clutch. He, he he won games for them. He drove in runs. He took a lot of pitches, and he was better than Bonifacio. Yeah. Like Bonifacio was pitiful this year. Yeah. Like, honestly, like he's got amazing speed. But he's he's a national league player. He needs to he needs to like bunt, create runs with his speed, and uh, like come in late in games to pinch run. Uh, and obviously, just, I don't know. They they also uh, playing him in center field and left field and second base. Just yeah, it's like pick a position. Yeah. <laughs> no disappointment. Brett Laurie. Yeah. Brett Laurie was a very big disappointment, but we are running out of time. Oh, yeah? So. Alright, so yeah, it's been an hour and 15 minutes. Hour and 15? Pretty uh, good for our first show. Fun first show. Yeah! Right, so, uh, we'll probably be back next week, hopefully, if our schedules align. What's, uh, what, what's the channel name? Uh, CBN Sports Talk. You can, uh, th- that's the channel, uh, um, that's how you spell it. I wanted to be Canadian Sports Talk, but. Um, that was taken? No, yeah. um,. Too long. Too long. <laughs> Too long. Too long. So CDN Sports Talk. CDN Sports Talk. Call, call, it, call, it, call it Canadian Sports Talk. Call it CDN Sports Talk. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, just uh, so one thing is, uh, I, I when I when my when I had the idea of starting this channel, I also wanted to talk to other people and have other people comment on what we talk about or what what they want us to talk about. So if you're watching this, if you're listening to this. Um, please comment. Uh, yeah, leave a comment. Leave a comment. Uh, I know Google has made it all weird, but um, uh, yeah, leave a comment. You, if you want, uh, you can tweet me at CDN Sports Talk. Um, I live Twitter, tweets. <laughs> the way I'm not on Twitter, so, uh, so just, you're not gonna get me. You're gonna get Adrian. Yeah. So hopefully, like honestly, like I, I really want to hear what other people think about what we talk about. Yeah. That'll be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys, if you're Listening, if you're watching, I hope you uh, leave a comment, tweet me, uh, do whatever. Um, if you want to hear more of us talk to each other and <laughs> mess up names yeah. and, and uh, have a bunch of slips, please subscribe and, yeah. uh, for more videos. We'll be doing this probably every week. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully yeah. every week. So uh, see you next time on Thanks the Adrian. listening slash watching. To the Adrian and Matt podcast. All right. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs>